Okay, folks, very special guest joining us today. This kid that turned into a mutant of a man overnight just earned a scholarship in his second year ever playing football after being a walk-on in his first year. Luke Brubaker, congrats on the scholarship and thanks for joining Chump Talk. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on today, Luke. It's great to see you on, on the show with us today. As Brady said, long overdue, but thanks for coming on. Just, uh, just tell us where you are now and what the last little while uh, has been like for you. Uh, well, right now, just living in Waterloo, just training and uh, working on my schoolwork pretty much. Um, yeah, it's pretty much life back as usual. Um, I'm focusing on football a lot uh, <laughs> as of recently. I mean, as sure as you guys know. Um, yeah. yeah, I've been pretty much just like working out every day, practicing as much as I can and um, just trying to stay on top of my grades. But that's about it. That's my life. Yeah, you definitely don't care about the grades, but I, uh, <laughs> I, I told you, uh, I told you I had a little bit of beef with you, and I, I hadn't told you till now what that is. But Friday night, Matt and I were both hanging out with Charlton Chuck, as we call him. He's a friend, friend of the show, and a good friend of yours as well. Um, he, we were talking about how we're definitely going to get you on this week, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I was talking to him." He said, he said he knows Matt more than he knows me. Which I was thinking, I'm like, what the? I don't, and you know, we we all know Chuck, so y- you can't always believe everything that comes out of that guy's <laughs> no, mouth. <you> can't. <laughs> but I believe that, and if that's true, I don't know what that year of counseling at Bible camp together did for us. I, I thought I thought I maybe left a decent impression, but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> How do you forgive me? Come on. <laughs> that's hilarious, man. Yeah, so that's that's that, and I guess we'll we'll uh, work on clearing that. Maybe we'll become <laughs> uh, become friends. I thought we already were, but no, maybe not. No, we'll get that for you. We'll get that for you. <laughs> um, okay, so big announcement that happened. What? When did it? When did you exactly find out that you got the scholarship? By the way, because we saw it on Instagram. Was that Saturday? Uh, Friday. Friday night. Friday night. Yeah. And and that's when you found out too, when that Instagram post came out, like soon after. Yeah, like I found it like in that moment. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. So talk talk about talk about that feeling because being a walk on, and we're gonna we're gonna go back to the start and hear kind of how you decide you even want to play football. But the feeling of getting a scholarship your second year ever playing and just being a walk on the year before describe describe how that felt in that moment with all the team around you too. It was uh, yeah, it was definitely uh, probably like the coolest moment of my life. Honestly, like it was yeah. it was crazy. Like I didn't I didn't expect it at all. Like they didn't really give me any heads up or anything like that um they were just handing out like they do like this hard hat player of the week or like hardest worker of the week or something like that in the off season um at the end of every week of practice and so like yeah they were just handing those out for the week um and then he yeah he dropped it on me and uh yeah it was it was pretty unbelievable honestly like it couldn't have been better with the teammates around and stuff and I got to break yeah. down the practice at the end it was uh yeah it was sick that'll be one I'll remember for a long time for sure amazing Where's that rank in all-time accomplishments? I'm sure it's hard to beat that one. Oh, that's, yeah, that, that might be at the top, honestly. There's, uh, yeah, there's not much cooler, I feel like, that I've done than that so far in my life. So okay. in regards to your, sorry, one other thing on the scholarship, how many, how many more years uh, are you eligible to play yet? Um, well, I think, the way, like, I think I'm technically eligible to play, like, four more years. I think you get five years, oh, okay. five years of dressing. Um, and I don't think there's, like, a max age anymore. I think they, like, took that away. Uh, I don't imagine I'll play for like four full more years for them, but uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's how long I could if I wanted to. Okay, so we got to take it back right to, from the start. So in the intro, I said, uh, kid that turned into a mutant of a man. And I think anybody that has known you for a while can see that, that that actually happened. And it felt like overnight for me. Obviously, I didn't see you as much, but it felt like overnight. Um, and then you decided to play football. Went when did you kind of decide and then how did the process go in of just like becoming a walk on? Did you just text the coach or how did that all go? Um, yeah, well, like I kind of decided when like COVID started, I guess, um, I've been doing like competitive boxing for a while. Um, and that all got shut down and I don't even know like what kind of switched. I just kind of like decided while I was still in university, I wanted to try to play football. I had wanted to try like most of my life. We just never had it like enlistable. We didn't have anything more on our high school so we just like one of those things was like I want to I want to try it while I still got the chance here in university so like I trained like throughout the whole summer like trying to trying to like put on weight and put on muscle and all that stuff and then I think um in December of 2020 I sent coach Falls the head coach like uh, an email and just had like a video attached with um 
like some lifting videos and stuff. I would just show them like what I could bench and squat and all that. <laughs> um, like I told them like my height and weight and that type of thing. Yeah. I showed him like some boxing clips too. Um, and he just like, he got back to me the next day, like saying they'd be interested in having me out um, for a practice like in the new year. So yeah, I ended up coming out to one of those and uh, yeah, they liked me after that, I guess. Wow. Were you, uh, were you always a football fan or where did this kind of like passion come for you to try it out? Have you always been watching it ever, like, since you were a kid, or? Yeah, like, I'd already been, like, been pretty interested in the sport. I didn't follow it, like, super close, to be honest. I was more of a, like, a hockey guy growing up. Um, yeah. I played hockey, like, up until kind of, like, I think mid-high school. Um, and I played soccer, too. So I played, like, a few different sports um, growing up. But, like, it hadn't, hadn't really been, like, any, like, big part of my life just because, like, it wasn't anything that I was around uh, – much yeah just because we didn't play it back in list really <laughs> yeah. kids were able to put together a football team so <laughs> yeah it's just one of those things um i was reading a article on you i believe it was at the start of last year and it was uh it was talking about the how you sent the videos in as you were just as you were just going over in the one quote from uh i'm assuming one of the coaches says uh coach v and i were texting each other like geez maybe we should at least uh see this guy at a practice because they were saying they hadn't given much thought obviously if there's a guy just um but then the videos obviously impressed him so first time you went to practice um is it like what's what was what's the biggest adjustment of actually like playing against people because it's not like a it's not like a sport um like hockey if you can't skate you're going to see that right away like you're walking out there but then i don't even, i've never obviously been in a football practice so i don't even know where they would start but were there any drills you were like holy shit i don't know what i'm doing or was there <laughs> was there any you're just like okay i can i can fit in here um i think uh i think a lot of the drills like i i picked up on pretty quick like a lot of the stuff um that we did like and I think it actually helped that it was COVID because we started off in like small groups of like 10 or 20 guys just working on like simple drills, like footwork and stuff. Mm -hmm. it was like the team was just getting back after like however long it was um, because of COVID that they couldn't play. So it was like they were slowly kind of easing the team back into things. Yeah. Right as I started playing. Um, so that like really helped. It was like all the drills we did at the beginning, I kind of, I kind of caught on to pretty quick, like just footwork stuff and um, just like, different running drills but I think like the big uh like something that hit me like a truck well like literally was one-on-ones -on -ones with the o-linemen like yeah <laughs> it was like yeah Some big was, boys yeah oh man I got <laughs> yeah I got put on my arse a couple times right after that. <laughs> like, uh, yeah like the drills felt to right but as soon as you go against go yeah. against it's a whole different uh, it's a whole different experience so yeah that was definitely like a good slap in the face to start off for sure you play on the D-line, but when it comes to coming on as a walk-on, how does that work positioning-wise for you? Did you have that kind of envision as a position you wanted to play, or was that just something that uh, you figured out yeah. through trial and error with practicing, and, or how, how did you uh, learn that that was the best suit for you? Um, that's kind of just, like, where I think they figured, like, based on my height and weight, I would just, like, fit in um, best. And I think also it's kind of a position where – um, you still definitely have to know the game and know what's going on for sure, but you can kind of just get away with being like a big aggressive guy. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, it's one of those things that kind of just suited me well. Um, and it was good for a guy like who had never played before. Like I couldn't, um, yeah, there's a lot of positions. I do. There's no way you could just walk into and start playing without, yeah. uh, without ever playing before. So yeah, that was just kind of what, uh, what they assumed would fit me best. And um, yeah, the other one was tight end. I think they considered like, yeah that, but i've been cool that was just like i don't know it's a little more finesse you got to have good yeah. hands you be yeah. like catch the ball so yeah like this, know, the, yeah. this boy from listy can't catch we'll just put him on the, <laughs> we'll just put him on the d line yeah. are you are you like what they would call an edge rusher like are you usually on the edge or are you lining up anywhere yeah i'm uh i'm always on the edge yeah always least, on the edge uh, this past season i was i don't know they might end up putting me um on the inside this year i've been putting on like quite a bit of weight so far this off season so yeah like who knows they might get moved in uh for some plays or something but yeah so far i've just been an edge rusher i j just want to to the people that are listening that maybe don't know football and maybe watch the big game that was yesterday this will be coming out tuesday but we're recording monday so like aaron donald von miller what would they be considered uh aaron donald would be a d tackle and then d von miller he would be probably considered d and i think he's actually like an outside linebacker type. yeah he's yeah. always on the line so okay he's pretty much a d end 
Okay. So you're, you're all, you're usually lining up on one of the sides. Does it depend on which, like it depends on the play I'm assuming. Yeah. I'm usually lined up um, like on the field side. So like depending on like where, which side of the field, the ball is placed on like which hash um, okay. up on the side where there's just like more open space, I guess. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Talk about uh, some of the first games, like obviously had never playing before, organized. Just just talk about any like oh shit moments in your first couple of games. You're like, holy shit, is this really for me? Or just uh, just something that you were really proud of that maybe was a sack or something in one of your first games or just sack just first talk game, about, right? Was it? Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. But yeah, just talk about some of those moments because I'm sure like with everything being brand new, there would have been a lot of firsts and a lot of oh man, I can't do that again. Yeah, they're uh the first game was pretty, um, yeah, it was pretty eye-opening for sure. Um, honestly, the first game I think was more uh, smooth sailing than the one after that, just because the team that we were playing wasn't quite as strong of a team. But um, yeah, that uh, I got my first sack that game, so that was probably like probably my proudest moment. Um, Any big uh, Sally after? <laughs> no, I, I I did not have the wherewithal to be selling. I, yeah, I was just uh, I was kind of in shock, honestly, that whole yeah. game to even be out there. But um, yeah, the first game was pretty crazy. Everything, well, even up for up till the end of the season, pretty much everything. So moves pretty quick for me. But the first few games, especially, it was like everything was moving so fast in front of me. I felt like everything was a blur out there, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but in yeah, so it was kind of is a big learning curve, that's for sure. Um, and I think uh, I would say there's like a moment in the second game when I was like, "This is pretty ridiculous." Like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to <laughs> to keep up a starting position all year. Um, yeah. doing Because I I got put on my butt like a couple times in the second game. Um, they have a really good Waterloo. We were playing UW. They have a really good uh, offensive tackle, and he put me on my can a couple times. Yeah. I was like, "Good gracious, what am I doing?" <laughs> Yeah, we battled through that. We battled through that. So yeah, yeah, I uh, I definitely learned from that and came back better the uh, the following games for sure. Have you ever looked back since you started? Like obviously uh, where you are now, I'm sure you know you're happy to be where you are. But just even in those early games, or just ever going off the field thinking, ah oh, man, like I don't know if this is for me, or it's just something that you immediately fell in love with and have never even thought about twice since you started. Um, honestly, yeah, I think. Uh, I think like everything was just moving so fast with like um, how quickly I got into it and then like hopped into training camp. And then like the fact that they put me on the starter for the first week, I didn't even really have time to kind of like think about like, I don't know if I can do this. Like I, I just kind of had to just like have in my head that like, I'm supposed to be here. I can keep up with these guys. Like um, this is it. And then I would say like pretty much after the first game, I, I kind of fell in love with it. I was like, it's, it's so much fun. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like the perfect, the perfect sport for me, I feel like, just because I wasn't ever that great at like soccer, or basketball or volleyball, which I played in high school. It was just too much like finesse and stuff for me. Yeah. I've always just been good at being rough. That's pretty much the only thing I've ever been good at. So. Just a meat and potatoes guy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's kind of just, it was the perfect fit. And it was a good combination of like, I did competitive boxing for a while. And I liked the the grit aspect of that for sure too, but I felt like you couldn't have as much fun uh, with boxing. Like, I mean, at the yeah. end, you don't play boxing at the end of the day. It's pretty, it's hardcore. Football is too, but it's like, I feel like I could, it has the grit, but there's also, you can have a lot of fun out on the field and stuff like that too. So it was like yeah. the kind of combo for me, I feel like. The the quote from this article I was talking about earlier is perfect for what you just said. Uh, it's a quote from you. I just like putting my head down and doing gritty work. That's pretty much all football is. So that's just a, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's just a football guy, head down, and you're just going to tackle someone. Yeah. Uh, I have another football question. Um, obviously, if it's uh, – so you're on the D line, and obviously you're lining up against a, an, whoever you're matched up against on the O line. And if it's a running play, the O line is going to go forward, and if it's a pass, they're going to drop back. That's pretty – okay, I think I got my football knowledge down there. Yeah. Um, one thing I always remember from a movie, Blindside, which is a great movie. I'm sure you've seen it. I know you've seen it because it was definitely at camp a few times. But yeah. uh, one one scene I always remember, Michael Orr talked about uh, when the knuckles – if you can see the knuckles, like if there's blood in it, then they're coming forward or if they're, yeah. if they're pale, then they're going back. And I think he was an O-line, so it'd be the opposite for him. But is there, is there a technique that you can tell, obviously if the quarterback's in the shotgun, then it's probably going to be a, 
they're going to drop back. But is there something technique you see, whether it's going to be a run or a pass? Um, I think a lot of it is based like on like each player kind of has different tells. So that's kind of something like we watch through in right. film. But like there's not like really the like a one tell that everyone has sort of thing. Um, like with the, the white knuckles, everyone wears gloves. So I don't even understand right. that. That, <laughs> even... that was probably just for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a cool line, honestly, but yeah, yeah that's, uh, I haven't had that applied, but, um, there are some dudes that'll just like put a little more, like be a little more shifted to their one side. If, uh, if they plan on dropping back or like some guys will be, um, st like stand up a little more upright if they're going to yeah. drop back to, um, yeah. So, and some dudes will like. Uh, some guys will like look directly at you if they if they plan on like running at you like if it's a run play right and if they're dropping back they'll kind of just be like looking off to the side sort of where they would meet you so everyone kind of has like a different little tell yeah um, and sometimes you can't really pick on up on it very well like some dudes don't but yeah sometimes if you can see it in film it, it's helpful for sure are there guys chirping out there too oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you chirps oh, are you getting uh, are you getting into it with them or what? <laughs> no, no, I'm not good at that, man. I can't run my mouth like that <laughs> myself. But uh, I got some teammates that are pretty good on it. Yeah, some uh, some boys that love tripping out there, and it's funny. I kind of just laugh along with it. Like I love, yeah. It, but yeah, I, I can't get into that. I would, it would be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, when you look ahead to next season, what just uh, what kind of things do you hope to accomplish individually and also as a team? Obviously, you know, going into your your next year now, you'll kind of you'll be more in a veteran presence in a way, but still new to the game in a way as well. But just what do you hope to accomplish individually and also team aspect as well? Um, I think, well, I think this last season was good for kind of getting my name on the map. Um, yeah, kind of just getting my name out there. And I think this season I want to, uh, I want to be a pretty big impact in the league. I think, um, yeah, I want to be a difference maker for sure on the field. Um, and like someone that teams have to kind of plan their offense around and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I just want to be a really dominant player um, by this season um, and also try to be more of a vocal leader on the team as well. I'm not like a super loud, yeah. rambunctious person. So yeah, trying to be a bit more vocal and stuff like that. Um, I think is a goal of mine as well. Um, then as a team, obviously like I want to win it all with my team. Uh, yeah. That would be unreal. And I think we have the, uh, the talent to do it. Uh, we have the right guys. We just got to, got to put it together a little better what does the travel look like for you guys what's the what's the furthest point you're going obviously i'm sure the playoffs uh, would probably uh, mean that you'd be traveling a bit further but just in the regular season what's the furthest you're going um I'm trying to think i think, like ottawa. Oh. Ottawa? I think ottawa is the furthest yeah we do go to is Windsor. it just just yeah. ontario yeah well okay. yeah yeah and our uh like that's all we'd be playing like during the regular season is ontario teams yeah yeah you play out of province in playoffs yeah okay yeah so we like could like and if we make playoffs like hopefully we do we could uh head out to like montreal or saskatchewan or something like that it just kind of depends yeah. on on how it works out but yeah ottawa i think is i think is the furthest we'll go um which is it's kind of it's kind of cool having that overnight uh game yeah, yeah. we didn't we didn't get to do it this past year because of covid they tried to keep like teams like in districts sort of right um so we like didn't travel out and play them but yeah, I've heard the Ottawa games are always a really good time. And I, I, I think I uh, already know the answer to this question, but you want to keep playing football past university, I'm guessing. You're just going to see where it takes you? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, hopefully I can play at the next level. I mean, that's definitely, that's definitely the plan for sure. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm, uh, that's kind of what I, what I got my head towards. So, yeah, hopefully I can get her done. Yeah, and that article I wrote about you last year when you like read the points, CFL scouts taking notice, just what kind of things are, are running through your head when you see that? Because I'm sure that's just got to be an internally an amazing feeling to know that you're being recognized for, I mean, just, you know, being new to the game as well and just to have that recognition already. Just what did it feel like to, to see those things wrote about you? It was pretty, yeah, it was pretty crazy. That article was after like, I think came out after just like my third week of playing or something like that. And I like, I don't know, it was all kind of surreal. Like it was just weird having um, people like reaching out to me and stuff like that. Uh, like agents, I had an agent contact me after the second game. Like, <laughs> wow. Like, it was just, I don't, it, yeah, it was just crazy. I was like, I do not think I just started, man. I, just, like, I've yeah. never played that. I just, I didn't feel like I deserved it really, you know? Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So it was, it was really epic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Everything that came with this season, like, yeah, it's honestly just been kind of a mind blowing journey so far. Yeah. No, you, de- you definitely deserved it. You worked hard for it. So um, question though, uh, for the first season, give us your best play that you had and then give us your worst play that you had. Uh, that, that you can think of or like one moment you're like oh man that was ugly or or something good to <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um i'm trying to think best play uh i got against mcmaster and uh, i think our fourth game i got a forced fumble which was pretty sweet nice um, you yeah. recover it no i didn't i didn't <laughs> i was i was on the ground holding the guy <laughs> yeah the uh yeah, somebody else did. They didn't even give, which is crazy. They didn't even give me that forced fumble on my stat line, which I was. Oh, come on. But, oh. Yeah, I know, but uh, yeah, we'll I think go after him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> notify him. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that was probably probably like the play I thought was the coolest. Honestly, I dove and kind of just like hit the ball out of his hand. It was kind of sweet. Um, yeah. And then yeah. worst play. I mean, <laughs> as you can imagine, there's definitely a few of them. There was like, yeah, there's lots of times like different teams would have like so many different motions and stuff going on in the backfield. And I have my eyes looking everywhere and all of a sudden they snap the ball and I just immediately get put on my butt. <laughs> yeah. So like that, I mean, that happened a few times. So I don't know if there was one time that was worse than the rest of them, but yeah, I got, I got pancaked my fair share of times uh, this season, which none of them were fun. Uh, quick, sorry, go ahead. Fulzy. I was going to say, if you could uh, just like thinking of things in like the large perspective here, if you could uh, go back and do it all over again, would you change anything about your journey so far with just in relation to your football career? No, definitely not. I think, uh, I think it's been awesome the way it's all, it's all just kind of fallen into place. Um, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm grateful to be where I'm at right now. And I think, uh, I think so far I've been pretty lucky with how, how quickly everything's progressed for me and just how it's, uh, how it's worked out. A lot of guys don't have the opportunity to, to even end up playing on a university team or starting or anything like that. So I think, um, yeah, just having those opportunities come pretty quick has been uh, awesome. So I, uh, yeah, I can't complain about anything. I wouldn't change any of it. Awesome. We're definitely going to talk about it more after we're done interviewing you on the last part of the podcast, but uh, Super Bowl happened last night. Uh, Rams take it 23, uh, yeah. 20, very, very profitable night for Matt and I. Uh, it was one of the, one of the rare times that, uh, yeah, one of the rare times, one of the rare times where <laughs> betting, betting maybe worked out a little bit. Uh, what, what were your thoughts on the games? Um, it, probably pretty cool for you to see Aaron Donald just light it up. Cause that's a guy you can, you can kind of enjoy watching. Yeah, it's uh, it's not often you see like a D lineman completely like take over a game. He did. But, like he just, yeah, he just does that so often. And so, like, yeah, for him to have like pretty like that game winning that game winning play is pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah. And he had the play right before that too that stopped uh, I don't know the running back from grabbing the first down too. That was huge. Down. He that was, pulled him back. It was it's unbelievable, man. There were three three guys on him. And he literally just with one arm, just like, oh, yeah. you're you're gonna not get this one yard. He is. I think I think it was third and one on that play too. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, it was. Yeah, man. he's so special. It's uh, yeah, he's so fun to watch, man. He he dominates. And yeah, seeing him in seeing him in triple, like getting triple teamed and still winning and stuff. Yeah. Honestly, it's a little demoralizing understanding how freaking good that guy is. It, like, it makes no sense when you watch him. Like, yeah. tough enough to go against one guy, let alone somehow manage to push your way through three guys. So, yeah, it's mind blowing. Yeah. It, I found it insane how the Rams played the last quarter because it was literally Donald and Von Miller on D just taking over. And then on yeah. offense, it was Stafford throwing it into quadruple coverage on Cup and Cup just somehow coming down with it every time. If Cup didn't have that last touchdown, though, Donald almost for sure would have got MVP that game, I think. He yeah. almost should have anyways. I, I honestly thought he got snubbed a little bit. I think he kind of should have got it anyways, to be honest. Yeah. But like Cup played well, but I don't like, yeah, I don't know. Donald just, I feel like Donald was kind of the reason they won that game. Yeah. Um, even without those last two big plays, he had pressure on Burrow like the whole time. They, uh, yeah, they just couldn't stop him. Do you think it was offensive pass interference on T. Higgins on that <laughs> no. touchdown? <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty gross. That uh, that little face mask grab. I don't know. I like. It kind of looked like Ramsey was sort of stumbling forward on. I don't know. I heard yeah. different people say different things, but yeah, I would say regardless, that was pretty. Uh, I was pretty filthy that he did that. I was cheering for the Bengals though, so I was kind of fired up that they 
<laughs> that he made that catch and took that to the yeah. Did he take that to the did, house? Did, think he, yeah, uh, he did. Did you see our Instagram post during the game, the T Higgins one? Yeah. We, yeah. We, yeah. we a bunch of us had him fourth touchdown, so we were going nuts, and then I was terrified they were gonna they were gonna yeah. over, overturn. Oh, that, that. would have been devastating. That imagine because yeah. there's like ten of us in the room going wild. We couldn't hear anything. They easily could have thrown a flag, and we wouldn't have seen it. That would yeah. have been, that, that, yeah, been, that would have been tough. Tough. That's. <laughs> So you guys won. What other bets did you guys win? I imagine you placed. We had a, a bunch of random different. Yeah, things. yeah, a bunch. I, I pulls you. You give a list of yours kind of after. But my, my big ones. My biggest one. I, I bet Rams money line after the Bengals took the lead. So the, the odds were pretty nice for that one. Yeah. And then, and then the uh, Betway boost they call it. It's they, they up the odds a little bit on one play, one or two plays. And it was Cooper, t- Cooper Cup anytime touchdown and Rams money line. I know Pools and I, that was probably, was that your biggest one, Matt? That was probably one of mine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it definitely was. So that was, it, mine were pretty heavy Rams. And then I had, uh, Joe yeah, mine were, yeah, if the Rams lost, it was a bad day. <laughs> yes. Oh, for sure. I kind of hedged myself by making uh, Joe Burrow MVP. I bet on that because I thought if the Bengals win, I'll lose every other bet, but Burrow will probably get the MVP. So. Sure. True. Yeah, that's, that's a smart bet, honestly. That's, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> the wheels are always spinning up there, <laughs> the wheel, and they're not they're not spinning in the right direction most of the time. But last <laughs> night, last night it it weirdly worked out. Do you have any other weird ones, Matt? Oh, blue Gatorade. Uh, oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I guess the red on the Gatorade. I also had a weird one. It was a Betway boost as well. It was McPherson two field goals, and then Aaron Donald and Von Miller to get a sack each, and that paid out like four or five times what I put down on it. So nice. that was yeah. that was another like low key one that I kind of kind of forgot about. But my my whole night was was made the first play of the game because I had a touchback happening on the opening kick because there were so many things that people were like we we have a football episode we do every Thursday in the season with with uh, DSAB dimes yeah. and on there and other people were telling me like the percentage of the time it's a not a touchback in the Super Bowl and honestly the Bengals guy probably could have or the Rams guy probably could have caught it but I was uh that one started <laughs> started my night off right but yeah. T. Higgin, T. Higgins was the game changer for me, for sure. Yeah, I believe that. That yeah, that's hilarious, <laughs> actually, how that worked out. You guys made money off a of nasty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Do you have an NFL team, by the way? Um, I've been, I mean, I kind of like the Titans, honestly. I've been, uh, I've been kind of a fan of them for like the past few years, and then, like, yeah, this past year, I was really, really intense about the Titans. So yeah, watching them take an L against the Bengals was. Yeah. Yeah. Tough go. <laughs> Tough go for sure. What about CFL? Uh CFL, I'd probably I'd probably just say the Argos, keeping it close to home. We're uh we're Elks guys, right, Poolsy? Yeah, yeah, we're Elks guys. Because we had uh Scott Hutter on. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you know him at all? He's friends uh, with like Tanner and Tanner and Bailey and those guys. Oh, he's from London or what? Yeah, he's from London. Okay, right on. I've yeah. never met him personally. He uh he came to one of our like our football uh we do like team zoom meetings. We have like guest speakers come back. Okay. So, like talk. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've got to hear him talk and stuff like that. Seems like an unreal guy, honestly. He is a really good guy. I'm sure he'd be, I, I know he'd be fine if you got in touch with him too. So if you need a need CFL questions, definitely reach out to him. Cause we're going to get him back on. We want to make, like, we want to do more football stuff. Like we haven't had, you're our second football guest after him. And then we do those episodes, but I want to try to get more football guests too. So we'll have to, keep having you on kind of occasionally as the year goes by and in the season once you once you maybe get that first interception you haven't got one right <laughs> uh, yeah that would yeah that would be unbelievable. you're gonna run one back this year i think a quarterback's gonna throw one off the center's helmet or something it'll bounce to you and then, <laughs> and then you're gone i would love that man i would i'd probably retire after that honestly <laughs> as a big lineman that's like yeah. Unbelievable. Do you think you'd be able to juke uh, somebody back there? Or would you just be straight, <laughs> just running straight? I think, uh, I think I could juke an old lineman for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, but the quarterback, I think I'd probably just run right through, honestly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've had the opportunity to run at a quarterback. I'm not juking him. I'm definitely trying no, to. No, you're him. going through him. Love yeah, it. Without Love a doubt. It. Do you have anything else, Pulsey? Uh, just, yeah, just kind of one more thing. Uh, what will the summer look like for you? Because this will kind of be your first. Uh, like full time, full time summer with knowing what you're potentially capable of with a or with a football career. So just what will the summer look like for you in regards to training regimen and just how you'll approach that? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'll definitely be going harder 
this summer than I did last summer. I still was, was training hard last summer, but I'll de- be doing a lot of um, probably individual work with uh, hopefully one of our D-line coaches um, and just trying to get like my technique and everything um, really down pat. Um, yeah, I'll be putting a lot of time into it for sure. Hopefully I can find a job that will uh, suit a good, a good training schedule and stuff like that. Um, I can afford now to not have to work quite as much with the scholarship, which, which fires yeah. me up. So I don't have to work quite as many hours this summer, which helps a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to be putting a lot of time into, into technique and probably learning, um, a little bit more of just like about offensive schemes and stuff like that. I'll probably be doing a lot more, uh, meetings with the coaches and stuff like that too. Uh, just trying to learn how to make like pre-snap reads and like really get in depth. This, this, this year was a lot of flying by the seat of my pants. So I want to be a lot more clinical about it, um, coming up this season. Yeah. yeah, that, that kind of leads into my next question. Just kind of like asking if there'd be like a biggest weakness thing that you kind of want to work on. Is, is that kind of it? Just like kind of learning to understand everything that goes on the game within the game and uh, just, you know, kind of the, the more IQ aspect of it or? Yeah, I would say um, biggest weakness would definitely just be like reaction uh, to like everything going on. Just like I don't have those natural well, – I don't have like the football instincts that a lot of the guys, like most of the guys that are playing out there have been playing at least since the beginning of high school, pretty much. So they kind of all have those, like those natural instincts, like they can kind of see stuff and know what's going on right away. Whereas I just like, when people are moving out in the backfield and stuff like that, I'm seeing it and it means nothing to me. I don't really know what's going on. So, like just, uh, where's, where's that guy going? <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, like, so being able to, to see things kind of before they happen, I think, uh, will be something I need to work on a lot. And I think that was probably my biggest weakness this past year. If you're going to, if you're, if you're saying you're going to bear down this summer and, and get to work, you're going to have to stay away from Chuck and Nolan and Keats. I think they're, yes. they're just going <laughs> to yeah. just stay right away from those guys. Yeah. We'll, we'll look exactly. after them. You, you just get to work. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. I don't need that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, man, I, I don't have much more, but I think people are really going to enjoy this and we're going to mm-hmm. definitely do it again. And I think that a lot of, uh, a lot of your friends are hopefully going to listen and um but after everything congrats because it's yeah, uh, congrats. pretty it's pretty insane and it's cool for cool for us too to see someone we know just work that hard and then get that scholarship i'm sure family's really proud of you we're proud of you and i'm sure all your friends are proud of you too so uh good luck with uh next season but we'll we'll talk to you before that for sure right on i appreciate you guys having me on this is uh yeah, it's a great time. I hope I can come on again sometime. For Absolutely. sure. We'll maybe, we'll maybe do like a season preview right before the season starts or something. Yeah, that would fire me up. I would love that. Okay, sweet. Sweet. All right. Thanks, Luke. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. See ya.